and we're off. Welcome everyone to the review session of the Spartan ECDSA audit, which also doubles as our closing session for this pilot ZK fellowship. We will begin with fellows presenting highlights of their reports and Daniel, uh, please provide feedback on the issues if you have any. Uh, other fellows can also ask questions or provide feedback as well as we go over things. Uh, but we will try our best to limit speaking time to seven to 10 minutes uh, per report just to keep the call on track. Um, so I think we will just start with this first tab here, uh, which we have a team of three auditors, Antonio Figiano, Igor Line, Oba. Uh, I don't know which of you wants to speak to this, but I will pass the microphone over to you to go over this report. Um, okay, maybe I, I can speak. Um, so, uh, because we haven't agreed like uh, who's going to be talking, but uh, uh, yeah, so uh, like uh, we have like all the code is uh, really amazing. Like we haven't, uh, like we really struggle hard, like to find uh, um, something uh, interesting there. So amazingly written stuff. Uh, uh, Congratulations, uh, Daniel. Uh, and uh, regarding the findings that we have, um, uh, first of all, like, um, like um, we have uh, like uh, high, uh, we classify them as high findings, but uh, they are um, uh, not really like, uh, probably not really uh, 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 relevant, like in this case, because like th there was like some usage defined by uh, by Daniel how the thing is going to be working, but uh, uh, still I want like to to put them on because uh, uh, the people might be forking stuff like and uh, trying to do things like uh, the idea is looking really appealing, uh, and I think that this thing should be at least like well documented like or um, um, maybe still should be there in the code. So the first thing is that uh, uh, basically is, uh, uh, we have the issue that um, uh, uh, the user when the user is submitting s as uh, equal to a zero or for example uh, uh, the point t would be having like uh, zero zero coordinates being in a TNT point uh, we are coming to the situation where um, the u point is equal to public key of the user so uh, again, this is like not expected like to the thing because we have like anonymous voting ideally yeah, like where the people are uh, not willing to expose their public uh, key. Uh, but for example, for other use cases where the people would want to use this for, I don't know, airdrops like for um, some claiming logic, for example, this would be uh, an issue uh, because eventually like efficient CDSA is, is named uh, and expected like to resolve like the, the signature to the proper address, but uh, S equal to zero is not relevant uh, signature, uh, but still would resolve to um, a proper public key in this case. Uh, uh, yeah, I also provided like a proof of concept uh, to the link, but uh, I don't know, do we discuss issue by issue or like I, I just point like these two things like and then it, maybe it's easier yeah, like, to do it like that. You can choose sure. how you want to do it. You can just tell which section you want to jump to first and we'll navigate um, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to highlight. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about the second thing here. So this, the second thing is the issue where like the user, uh, uh, like if you, if you know some, because there is like no constraints on the message like that the user is signing, uh, then the user is able to use uh, any kind of the signature that he knows. So for example, like uh, if I would find a uh, uh, permit um, signature for USDC of some user uh, that I know that is uh, part, part of the uh, Merkle tree, I would be able to uh, generate uh, a proof like using this signature uh, and submit it. Uh, uh, yeah, like proving that uh, uh, I know the, the public key membership, uh, yeah. So these are the two things. I don't know, Daniel, if you want to uh, to say something about that. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks for thanks for um, summarizing all your findings. Uh, yeah, the, the report 
um, looks great. And then uh, both of the sections make sense. And yeah, as you mentioned, um, it is so uh, the things you mentioned that are not constrained are indeed not constrained in this circuit, but it is checked outside of the circuit. So in practice, uh, it is not a problem, uh, as you may know. So, but yeah, uh, it does make sense. And it is a good point that uh, we might want to add some documentation. So people who fork the circuit will know how to use them. Um, yeah, so overall good points. Uh, one question, like uh, what's the, uh, what would be the uh, the idea on the uh, how you can constrain the the message here? Right. So the message, um, the hash of the mess. Uh, so in efficient ECD, they say you check the T and U values outside of the circuit. So you check that if the group elements T and U are correctly computed, and in that check you specify or you use the message hash that is predefined. So in any membership uh, check, there is a message that you need to sign. And then the verifier will know that message and verifier will, will use that hash of the message to check if the T and U values are correct. So that uh, implies that uh, the message is constrained. Mm, but uh, this would not be done within the circuit, no? Like no, no, it is it is done outside of the circuit to yeah to reduce the number of constraints. Mm, I see. Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, and um, another thing uh, that I have uh, in our report, uh, can you please scroll down, engineer? Yeah, so nothing for medium low. We have uh, also uh, uh, one optimizational um, thing. Uh, uh, I think lots of people have found it. Like so, uh, and uh, also uh, uh, informational. Yeah, like that. Uh, the, there was like the variable present that uh, was never used. Uh, we also uh, did run like the uh, uh, different uh, tools uh, to uh, analyze uh, the circuit itself. So uh, uh, Pico Sechner and uh, also Circum Mutator. Uh, I don't know, Antonio, if you want to, to share something about that as well. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, one of the things that we noticed and we wrote on the report is that um, uh, the test coverage isn't as expensive as it could be. Um, like usually the happy path is checked, but other like edge cases, they are not. So we decided to implement a mutation a testing tool so that we could verify um, if the test suit was uh, actually uh, checking for these edge cases and and the idea is behind this uh, behind this tool is that you generate uh, mutants they are uh, kind of variations of the circuits uh, that will uh, inject bugs and and then they will check if the test suit will catch these bugs and in many cases um, we verify that it didn't catch so for example uh, uh, like of this uh, like the first issue that we just presented of F not being constrained uh, uh like there are no tests uh, that that will uh, check for that and and there are also some some edge cases for uh, uh complete addition versus incomplete addition that uh, the test suit will not um, uh, catch as well so the, the, the general result of this tool is just like an assessment of of the test coverage Yeah, so I think that uh, that's it. Uh, if uh, uh, you want to add something on people sector, otherwise we are good. I, I think it's uh, it's okay. Uh, on PQ Secne, we added uh, uh, a paragraph on uh, uh, interpreting results from those tools because there is uh, not really uh, documentation on it. But yeah, we run it and uh, all the results are in the report. 
Okay, excellent. Thank you for going over all of that. If there's any comments from anyone else or questions, you can jump in now. Otherwise, we will jump to the next report. Okay, let's go to the next report. And if there are any questions, uh, we can catch that at the very end. Um, so the next report here, uh, we have another team. We have uh, Chen Wen Kang and Vincent Owen T. So if one of you wants to go over that, uh, I will pass the microphone over to you. Yep, sure. Um, should I start? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so for us, uh, we've gone through the code and I think as the previous team, uh, previous team uh, has mentioned, it's pretty hard to find. Uh, what we found um, essentially are mainly informational findings, um, which at this point I feel like it's a bit nitpicky on our part. But yeah, so the first one I think is also covered. Um, there is a um, variable that's redundant in the ECDSA circuit. So um, yep, that's essentially the first one, the bits variable. The second that we found, um, this is done via circumspect um, for the value computed in the add dot circum, um, there is a dx value that is not constrained, although this can, I believe, can be checked um, prior to um, using the circuit to actually compute proof as well. So it's not really a big um, issue. So the last one, I think it's more of just um, having more tests for both the EFF ECDSA and the EFF ECDSA to address. Those only have one positive test as of now. And yep, that's essentially it. It's, uh, yeah, it's really difficult to find, for us to find other stuff. <laughs> um, yep. Thank you. Um, just to ask, one question. So the part you mentioned that a dx could be zero, so it could be division by zero. Uh, which template was that? Is it a uh, complete addition or incomplete addition? I can um, just pull that it up. As well, is, but... Let me just go to the code as well. I need to re relocate it. Um, I believe it's the add dot circum file. I think it's the Um, hmm. It is, yes, it is the incomplete addition part. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if a, if, yeah, if the X here is zero, then uh, you cannot prove uh, the satisfaction, but uh, this shouldn't be a, yeah, as you mentioned, this shouldn't be a uh, case because there's no, uh, there's no case where division uh, by zero happens here if a uh, valid, if a valid, uh, yeah, valid input is applied, I believe. Okay. Uh, yep, that's what we found as well. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. So yeah, the, the report looks good, and then yeah, thanks for the informational uh, details as well. Uh, I'll um, add it to the uh, future fixes. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Very good. I will let anyone else comment or chime in quickly. Otherwise, those can be saved for the end, and we will jump to the next report. OK, next report it is. So this report is by Parsley. I will pass it over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, the only two findings were the informational findings of the unused variable for bits and those uh, incorrectly defined array values in the one circuit, which uh, we spoke about and, 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 can, and everyone else has, has mentioned. Uh, the only thing that uh, did do a bit extra was that um, buzzer of the of the uh, Python and uh, checking the Rust to the circum output um, 
that was written that I shared with everyone. And um, with 10,000 runs, I know it would take way more, but uh, 10,000 runs was not able to to uh, generate anything uh, that would be a vulnerability in the Python uh, circuit. And that's it. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, the father, the father uh, looks great. I uh, take a look at it and yeah, uh, it looks like a great tool. Thank you. Okay, so once again, I'll give a quick moment for any comments or questions. Otherwise, we will jump to the next report. Okay, and onwards we move to the next report. This one is by Baharum. I will pass the microphone over to you. Hello. Yes, uh, the report. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay. you fine. Okay. The, in the report, I report just uh, one finding. Uh, and there is one information and uh, one uh, law, which I believe is not being addressed. So I could just scroll uh, down. Yeah, that's the finding. Uh, that's what I, what I found that in the complete edition, uh, actually, there is an edge case where uh, the, the, the result is incorrect. Uh, if you want, yeah. And uh, I don't, I'm, maybe we can look this. If you click in the link on sec B256, yeah. That's it. Basically, if you look at the comment on line 102, uh, it says, yeah, that these zero eyes should be one when the when the this Q and P are the same point. And uh, sorry, no, when uh, Q and P are um, uh, to uh, one uh, uh, like yeah with this condition. And uh, and the zero otherwise, okay. But uh, on in line one hundred five, uh, actually using is equal. It's is it it doesn't return the same result as the as the as the formula in the comment. And uh, uh, here the idea uh, was good, but it works in every case except when. Uh, you have two separate points on P and Q are different with different X and uh, the case where YP plus YQ is equal to one. Uh, so I'm not sure, I, I, I did a quick, uh, I did a search uh, brute force, but I couldn't find any values, uh, short search on the, on the curve with, uh, with this uh, property. Any points? Sorry, any two points, but they could exist. I couldn't find any proof either that uh, that uh, they don't exist. So, uh, uh, if you come back to the report, the the uh, I give an impact of low because I, I I'm not sure this exists, but I'm not even sure not uh, sure either if it doesn't. So I say that either you you should document that uh, yeah. It is impossible or practically impossible for this case to occur, or change the the, the constraints to yeah to be the same as the comment the logic. Yeah, I hope it's clear. If you have any questions, uh, thanks, Bahram. Um, yes, he. Uh, informed me about this issue in uh, Discord uh, privately. And then, yes, it does look like uh, the circuit is not handling this edge case correctly. And then um, instead of using the is equal template, we should use the end template to correctly capture the edge case. And it does look like a completeness issue. So it doesn't look like a 
So it doesn't look uh, like a bug that allows uh, fake proofs to be fake proofs to uh, be verified uh, to verified to be valid. So um, I think for now I, I agree that this uh, the classification of low impact is correct. But um, I do I think we need to look into it deeply and then see if if that uh, yp plus yq equals one uh, do exist and uh, if there are any ways to manipulate the circuit to um, output uh, to, to be satisfied even though the uh, private inputs are uh, not not um, um, not inputs that we intend so uh, yeah this is this is actually a great finding um I just, uh, understand that the constraints might uh, be hard to read, but um, uh, yeah, this is a great, fun uh, yeah, so, so even though the constraints were pretty hard to read, I believe this, is, this was a great fun finding. Uh, we will probably ship this completeness uh, bug uh, fix to production soon. Great. Yeah, that's, that's uh, I, I just started at the end some uh, final remarks. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, as as Dan said, there are uh, there are many there is implementation many complex maths, and uh, yeah, and uh, sometimes readability is not uh, the best because of the optimization of the circuits. And uh, yeah, but besides this, everything looks <laughs> good to me, and also. Just as a final note that this this circuit runs uh, is compiled with a modified version of uh, Circum, and uh, also uh, is uh, it should uh, a modified version of Spartan and YZK should be used. So uh, yeah, that that could come with uh, uh, bugs, but yeah, but it was completely out of scope. But just a security note. That's it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. I'll wait one moment for any additional comments on this one. OK, we are ready to move on to the next report. So for this one, we have Nullity to present. I will pass the microphone over to you. OK, cool. Um, so I just have, I think, one finding. And um, could you please jump to the high finding? Yeah, just scroll down. Uh, yeah. So um, in mal.circom, I see that the signals um, slow and she are just assigned and there's no constraint created. And I believe this could be um, under constraint. The signals could be under constraint. And um, yeah, I, I think we could replace those um, quadratic um, stuff with the solution that I've mentioned below. So I just created a template for um, bitwise and and right shift. So uh, we could use this instead of just using the default operators mentioned on the circom doc site. So uh, this way we do produce a lot of constraints, but I think this would be a safer option to use. Um, yeah, any comments? Hmm. Oh, this looks interesting. Um, as low and as high. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think I can provide a concrete answer right now, but I think uh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to look into it, but. It does seem like a slow NSI. First, we simply assign values, and then later, I uh, check that uh, if it's assigned um, We correctly. don't constrain them everywhere, anywhere. So. Oh, maybe that's. Okay. 
Okay, I do have to look into this. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. This might be a good finding as well. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thanks. Okay. Final comments on this one from anyone? Okay, so I guess we are done with the reports unless there is anyone else who didn't present who's on the call that wants to share a link to their report quickly in the chat. We could uh, cover any anyone that we forgot. Uh, otherwise, I will actually open up the floor to any general feedback or feelings about this audit that anyone wants to share, uh, whether mentor or fellow. Uh, so just what you think about how this audit went, what you saw, what you saw in the findings. I certainly can. Um, I think the code was very well written and implemented just as uh, the specifications um, that it was based on. So. As a as a learner, as somebody learning the the ropes, it certainly uh, left us with well, left me. I can only honestly speak from my point of view, but left me with absolutely nothing to to find uh, in terms of vulnerability. So congratulations to the team. They very solid code base and very well thought out and implemented, from my opinion. And um, thank you, Daniel, for being available to answer questions, because whenever there was something, uh, you were quite quickly able to either point us in the right direction or to a specification or to a blog post or something. So everything that may have uh, presented an obstacle was either documented some way or answered some way. So thank you from my point of view. Thank you very much. Thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, it was it was a pleasure working with uh, all of you, and then it was a, a great learning journey for me as well. Um, and uh, yeah, these reports are amazing, and then I would like to uh, take the time to uh, go over them again uh, soon. Thank you very much. Excellent. And just to, uh, for anyone who's watching the recording and doesn't see the chat, it does seem like there is agreement that uh, Poseidon hash took a lot of time to understand, um, just for anyone watching the recording. Okay, onwards to closing remarks then. Um, so Daniel, you can submit uh, your response to the reports on the issue page uh, for each report. And if there is a PR that relates to a given issue, uh, it'd be great if you could just link back to the the issue um, just so we have a, a connection to what's happening outside of the report. Uh, it helps us to keep track of the whole uh, fellowship outputs in one place. Okay, so that's that. Uh, we would like feedback from everyone on how the fellowship went. So we'll probably send out a feedback form by email soon. Uh, that will just help us improve future ZK fellowships because of course you were one of the lucky few in the first one. Um, so watch for that email in the coming days slash weeks. Uh, as we close this fellowship, we would like to give a shout out to some outstanding fellows and mentors. Uh, typically, we have a few badges that we virtually hand out, and we might later attach some NFTs to them and send it out to all of you, hopefully soon. Um, but for now, we will start with some, some verbal thank yous uh, to acknowledge those of you on the call. So we thank everyone, first of all, who participated or contributed in any way, uh, but we would like to give some special recognition to exceptional fellows, mentors, helpful friends, and uh, we would like to give the following acknowledgement. Uh, starting with fellows, shout outs to Igor Line, Antonio Vigiano, Parsley, Nagu, Oba, and Nullity. And specifically, we appreciated the depth of Igor, the breadth of Antonio, the spirit of Parsley, the helpfulness of Oba and Nagu, and the curiosity of Nolody. So thank you again, Igor, Antonio, Parsley, Nagu, Oba, Nolody. 
Um, and that was the highlights for the fellows. Now we have some highlights for mentors. Uh, so specifically, we would like to recognize and thank the exceptional mentors, uh, Razul Ibrahimov uh, from the PSE group at the EF. Apologies for any mispronunciations here. Daniel Tefrani from Person A Labs. Ben Sapansky from Veridice. And more specifically, we appreciated the dedication of Razul, the clarity of Daniel, and the generosity of Ben. So thank you again, Razul, Daniel, and Ben for being some great mentors. And finally, we would like to give a shout out to thank some friends who helped us in the background for this fellowship. In particular, Barry Whitehat, Kyle Charbonnet, and the amazing Kobe Gherkin. So thanks again, Barry, Kyle, and Kobe for your help and advice along the way. And that is a wrap. Uh, unfortunately, this is now the end, but I'd like to thank all of you for joining. Uh, this has been exceptional, I think, for everyone involved. And I'd like to just say good luck, everyone, in your ZK journey. Uh, know that you will always have a home in our community, but for now, it is goodbye. So until we cross paths again.